In that matter, I'm going to bring a colleague and a researcher that I've been working with um, from Bitergia up on stage. Here he comes, Daniel. And we're going to talk a little bit first today about some research we've been doing about how you guys are all connected to each other. So, Daniel, welcome. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. How are you? So, um, we always talk about collaboration and action. This is a slide that I usually do. And this time, we are um, here in Spain. And Daniel, who um, is co-authoring some papers and hopefully a book with me on this uh, topic uh, soon, is, has been, um, is based in Madrid. So I figured right, we'd do something a little different this time and bring him up. And we talk a little bit about this. Because at Red Hat, we always talk about how open source is the source of everything. And we work on, as a company, millions of projects. There are, you know, this is a little out of date because it's 2018. But GitHub has 96 million plus repositories. And there's millions and millions and billions and billions of developers working there. But it's really about the connections that we make um, and the diversity of the communities that we work in that helps to create this wonderful, innovative world that is Kubernetes and the CNCF and OCI and all of the other Apache and Eclipse projects. And so we wanted to take a look at how all of that was connected to each other. Because as we know, OKD, and if you didn't get the socks yet, and if you have no idea what that is, on the socks. That is the OKD Panda. Um, and we renamed, if you don't, didn't realize this, OpenShift used to be called OpenShift Origin. We renamed it to OKD. And the joke really is that it's OK, Diane. That's what you got. You know, this is all you got. So um, they, they gave up trying to re find a name and they just surrendered to OKD. But it is really a function of Kubernetes plus all of the other projects that we work amongst. Um, we talk about collaborating with the upstream, all the upstream projects that we pull in to, um, to OpenShift to make it um, into the container platform, into dedicated, into online, and now into Azure, um, and to lots of other um, people who are hosting OpenShift as well are pulling in different integrations. Um, and we collaborate across lots of different streams with our um, folks who are deploying it. They add value on on top of it. There's a number of the other present co-located events today that are partners of ours, from Twistlock to Aqua Security. Lots of people are adding on top of OpenShift. Um, and then we deliver it as a product um, with lots of other stuff, and we get it certified. So we do all of this goodness and stuff. Um, and that has, as a good community manager would want, driven lots of contribution actually into OKD. Though um, there's, I think now there are about 80 plus organizations that have made some contribution. The font gets really smaller. And this is, um, you're seeing probably for the first time, the Petergia dashboard that we use to track all of the things that go on inside and behind the scenes. So this is great. Um, but really, the future isn't about contributing to OKD. So most of the contributions that OpenShifters and Red Hatters do now are directly into Kubernetes or Prometheus or into the other projects. Um, there's tons of Red Hatters, and this changes all the time. So I have given up trying to keep it up to date. But there's lots of Kubernetes contributions being done out there. Um, and it's, there's lots of projects. And this probably has, I think, since last week, has a few more things that have been added into it. And up in the top corner, you're going to hear today about the operator framework, which is now adding, um, and this is 29 items. I think it's up to 37 operators, or 39. I didn't look this morning. But people are um, building operators, which again extends what Kubernetes can do and the automation and um, the management of services on Kubernetes. So the, the complexity of understanding how all of these projects are interrelated becomes kind of crazy. And if you are someone who is doing community development and your company tasks you with um, networking and creating a peer-to-peer -peer network with everyone, it's quite difficult to know who everybody is. So we have done something, I think, a little unique for um, in community development is we started to apply some of that wonderful data science tooling that um, you all get to use for sales and marketing and everything else to community development. So we've taken a bit of a data-driven approach to 
um, working um, on all the data that we've collected, and I'll let you talk a little bit about where all that data is coming from, Daniel. So why don't you? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, well, the tooling is, of course, 100% open source. Uh, it's part of the Chaos project. Um, well, you can you can go for look if look for this. So this is in Grumar Lab. You have the URL there. Uh, this is this is kind of the architecture. So you have the usual retrieval part at the very beginning uh, on the left of the slide, where you have the usual data sources. So you can go for GitLab or GitHub or uh, Atlassian stack. You retrieve everything. You store everything. And then there is some uh, magic around identities, which is kind of a headache, as you can say. Yeah. Right. And so you have to improve and and, and and polish the data and affiliations and all of this information. And then it happens that then, then you have a curated database for or let's say the CNCF ecosystem, the OpenCF ecosystem, and you can aggregate all of this data and look where developers are working, in which companies, where they are coming from, areas of the code, and then you can have a really full understanding of what the community is doing, right? Um, so, well, this is uh, Victoria Analytics, let's say, and at the very end, what you saw before, um, which is uh, this chart is one of the things you can produce. So uh, yes, I have a really quick introduction. So each of the dots are developers. <clears throat> and then you see at the kind of uh, at the very center kind of small blue rectangle. So those are the projects. So we have Kubernetes, we have uh, Fluent, we have um, Envoy, Open Tracing, and some others. Um, uh, there is a relationship between the dot and the blue rectangle if that developer has been working at that project. Um, then you can see that there are some other cases uh, where, yeah, this pointer, where basically we have developers working in both communities. So we have relationships, right, between uh, developers working on uh, Kubernetes and developers working in OpenShift. So all of these people are working in both communities. And of course, we have other developers working in more than one community. So all of this mess between here in the middle, this is uh, developers working in several of them. So who are they? What are they producing? So who's who in the community, right? What can we understand from all of this. Yeah. So this is, this is the ecosystem that we all have here. So, so we call this the, the amorphous jellyfish. <laughs> so we're going to drill down a little bit on this, because I think this is interesting just as you start to see, and um, we, we didn't pick any individuals to dive into, but go, go ahead and we'll just talk a little bit more about so, this. Yeah, yeah, this is we took, yeah, we took one example here, the Jaeger example. So how many of you know what Jaeger is? All right, and you're using it. So this was a project um, that was donated to um, CNCF uh, by uh, Uber and had a number of Red Hatters who were working on it. And so that's sort of what you're seeing is the interrelationship between people who are working on Jaeger and people who are working in Kubernetes. So that little network in the middle, are the no that those are you. Those are people in this room or in other rooms who are who be here at the conference. And you can actually click on them and get their name and understand who they are and see what other projects they're working on. And then uh, we have this concept we've been, we've been discussing about connectors, right, and mavens, and so who yeah. are those important people? Too? Yeah, so if you, um, ever, if anybody read Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point, um, you know, it's, it's sometimes people love it, sometimes people hate that book, but that he has concepts of personas that we all know of mavens and connectors and that. So these people are, some of them are the project leads, some of them are surprising, they're not people you would expect. Um, and it's quite an interesting dynamic to do. And, it, and having this tool as someone who does community development is, is so wonderful because if I need to find someone who's working on the Jaeger project, who knows Kubernetes, and who maybe knows you know, Kafka, right? I can look and see and tease out where that person is. So indeed, if, if we look, let's say, a bit more in detail, so who are those three people working uh, in Jagger and in OpenShift? So we have, we have those names. So these are the, let's say, the connectors, the important people that are kind of helping to drive the community, to build community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, if you look, Jurassic is a red hatter. Greg Swift was at um, Rackspace. He actually got the, the OpenShift um, Community Award at the last, or two, two gatherings ago, we gave him that. He's now at LogDNA. And Julius, I forget where he's from, but um, they're, they're the people who have, the, the larger the circle, the bigger number of contributions that they've made in the diagram. So it's just. 
So, so, yeah, so we wanted to start teasing out some of this um, and looking at it, not just at an individual level, but sort of at a company level. Like, so where else is Uber? Um, we just are using them as an example on this one. Where else are they showing up in this ecosystem? So they show up, obviously, um, uh, Yuri here shows up in Jaeger, Open Tracing. Um, surprisingly, Uber's doing a lot of work in operators in M3DB. Um, is uh, their mega data, database um, that they've been working on. Then they'd also done, um, I think, a little bit of work um, a long time ago in OpenStack, but that didn't show up in the history yet. So, yeah, this is, uh, so we have a live demo that I can show you this, this data, basically. Um, so this is uh, Uber Rackspace in this case, because we were discussing about Greg, right, and, and Red Hat. So, of course, the, the big, uh, uh, the big stars we have are uh, Red Hatters, but then it happens that we have uh, some other people and some other companies. So, for instance, well, this okay. Yeah, come on. So we have Red Hat, Uber, and Rackspace. These are, uh, let's say, the legend of colors we have. Uh, if we go for this, it happens that, of course, we have Uber and Rackspace, as we mentioned before, working in some other projects. So we have Uber people interrelated with Red Hat, interrelated with Rackspace developers. So if, let's say, if we don't know people participating in Jagger, probably we can go, we can reach them through several people within either Red Hat or Uber or some other companies. And indeed, if we, uh, we can do things like, uh, well, let's filter this, and then uh, let's try to understand fully where Uber is working, so we can filter here, we can save the information, and then we have the developers, Uber developers working in open tracing um, uh, Jagger here, and then uh, the bigger the dot, as you said, is the more contributions by this developer were pr uh, produced for that repository. And, and this data set, we haven't put in the data for all of the CNCF projects yet, but that's something we're working on as well as a number of other projects. And we will be um, adding in all of the operator repos as well. So it's just going to get more complicated and more interesting. Um, but I also, um, being a Canadian, I have to say this one hockey metaphor, is it also allows us to see where the hockey puck is going. So uh, there's some famous... Um, uh, Canadian person, uh, uh, hockey player, who's, who once said you should never look at, you know, watch the hockey where it is. You have to look ahead to see where it's going. And so this has allowed me to see um, like migration from OpenStack, people from OpenStack who are moving over and starting to work on Kubernetes. So you can start to see historically the, 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 the movement of actual contributors and people working on projects through, um, through this community. And you start to really get a sense of how much this, how much cross-community collaboration is really happening here, and it's it's pretty important to the health and um, well-being of uh, of the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well. Yeah. So um, M3DB, we um, just recently did a Santa Clara OpenShift Commons gathering, and um, two folks were also at the KubeCon event in Seattle on stage talking about you know, their wonderful operator that they've done um, to make uh, this run on Kubernetes really nicely. And, um, and then we're working with them slowly to get that into the operator hub so that it runs, on, um, on, runs anywhere. Um, so this has been quite an interesting phenomenon to watch how this is all very fluid. Um, and then the other thing that we are, we've been doing is working um, pretty closely um, with a lot of our people who are using OpenShift. Is there anyone from Amadeus in the room today? So I'm not outing anybody here. OK, good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so we, we, we picked on them because they've been long time and very vocal um, OpenShift supporters and contributors to the um, origin and then into OKD, um, and, and done a lot of work um, in lots of different spaces, from RDO and OpenStack to Kubernetes to OKD um, and to OCP on Azure, um, as well as uh, recently we had them at another event and they were working on Kafka and they came in and gave a wonderful presentation, which is on our YouTube channel, um, on um, what they're doing with Kafka now and doing contributions to that. So you start, uh, and I keep repeating myself, but I, you start to see the real interconnectedness of all of these projects. Um, then we have the question, how does this community look like uh, with Amadeus? So uh, for this, 
course, we produce another specific uh, chart where, again, we have most of the people are coming from Red Hat. If we compare Red Hat and Amadeus, it makes sense. Um, then we have these two BX stars here, and this should be OpenShift. Yeah, so this is Kubernetes. Um, then we have some developers working in the two communities. Um, then we have some Amadeus, some, some Amadeus people, which are these Purple developers around, right? So this is a interesting way of, of looking at all of this data. Um, yeah, and this one is, uh, we were discussing right before this, hey, can I have this, uh, but Uber, Amadeus, and Red Hat, so the three of them together, so we understand the, the ecosystem of the three companies. So this is, uh, this is the ecosystem of the three companies where we have, again, uh, the big player, which is Red Hat in this case, with OpenShift and Kubernetes on the top. Um, then we have, um, so the, the legend is, whoops, uh, Uber is the green ones, Amadeus is the purple, so we have some uh, Amadeus developers, and then we have uh, some Uber developers around Open Tracing uh, and Jagger. Cool. And if we go to the next, did you do the? Um, oh, the IBM. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, then there's another little interesting thing that's happening here, um, which I think maybe is a good one to, to talk, talk about last here, because it's coming up soon, is the intersection of where all the IBMers are working and where all the Red Hatters are working as we walk through this next um, variation of what IBM and Red Hat are going to be doing together. So that you'll start to see, um, and it makes it easy for me and for everyone else to see where we're going to all be working together um, as we merge our two companies. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, so we have Red Hat mainly driving OpenShift, and then we have IBM and Red Hat working together. Well, in uh, Kubernetes and Open Tracing and Jagger and some other projects. So oh, cool. All right. Let's go back to the slides. I think that might be my. So we had. Um, I think that was it. Uh, you okay. mean the. Is there one more slide? Did we have? No, okay. Hit the slide. Okay. So you want to go? Go to the next slide. Oh, the, the slides, right? Yeah. Okay, let me go down here. I think. Yeah, so good. Yeah. All right. So really, uh, I know that's all interesting to me, and I hope it's a, that was interesting to you to, to really maybe get some visualization on, on how you are all connected to each other in some way. And as we improve the data set and bring in, um, bring in the, the, the additional um, repos and mailing lists and information that Bitergia allows us to do, um, we'll be sharing that information as well publicly and lots of other venues too. So that's really the, the key here is uh, there's a couple of takeaways, I think. Um, we, at, at the beginning, I mentioned that uh, OpenShift Commons um, is an organizational-based community, um, so, and that we ask you all to use your GitHub um, or your corporate names. Um, one thing that, I, that was interesting to tease out of all of this data is that there really is no anonymity out there. So if you think you're being anonymous using your Gmail address with GitHub, it's not there. I mean, it's so easy to um, figure out who people are and their affiliations these days. But it's also interesting because there still are a, a number of independent developers working on these projects too. So that's been quite fun um, to find them and to, to realize that there's a lot of um, traditional open source contribution still going on, not just through corporate funded um, development. So there's lots of um, great information here. We'll share it out in lots of um, other papers, hopefully in the future with Daniel. Um, and if you're interested in joining the commons um, and finding your peers, um, the room is here for you today. Um, we really ask that you network amongst each other, meet some new people here. There are a little, just a little over 200, I think, people today, I haven't gotten the count, um, in this room and then a, a little over 100 in the other room that are working on those operators. Um, so, and we'll all be in here today for the whole day. Yes, the whole day. Um, and lunch and everything else will be served in here. So this day is about you and getting um, you up to speed on what's coming in OpenShift and Kubernetes and this whole wonderful ecosystem that we're all working with. So thank you, Daniel, for you um, helping me with all this research. And um, we look forward to publishing some papers that you can give us feedback on soon. So thank you. Well, enjoy your day. All right.